Okay, here we are. Um, still uh, getting back to the build on my, uh, or the rebuild on my Sport Classic uh, as per another post. I started today uh, swapping out the rotors on my uh, wheels for braking rotors and uh, realized it might be a good opportunity to share some things with folks who, uh, guys who may be uh, looking to doing this and uh, haven't done it before. And, and as simple as a task as it may sound, um, there are pitfalls here. And uh, that being, you have a grade 8 Torx bolt uh, tightened into a, an aluminum rim. Uh, Ducati, in my experience, and many of the bikes I've taken apart that were rebuilt or whatever projects I've had, that they use a lot of thread locker. And usually it's a chore to get these out. So I've already done the other side. Uh, let's first just talk about the tools you should have on hand. First, obviously, is a uh, number 40 Torx bit. Uh, these are an 8 millimeter uh, by 1.25 thread bolt. Uh, I keep a quarter inch ratchet on hand whenever I can do something with quarter inch. That's my preference, either taking it off or tightening it. Um, uh, you're less likely to do any damage. Uh, 3 8 drive or ratchet. Um, or sorry, half inch drive ratchet and a 3 8 drive ratchet. As well, I have handy um, tap, an 8 by 1.25 tap, and uh, a die. And it's a good, you know, if you're going to do some of your own stuff at home, it's good to have uh, a set of taps and dies. And you can just get a cheap set uh, from one of your local auto stores, and uh, it'll have most of the common metric uh, thread sizes and is great for uh, cleaning up bolts and holes as you'll see here. Also a WD-40 which I use for just about everything uh, and uh, which works as a solvent and a lube. Some medium strength thread locker and some I'm using electro contact cleaner to clean up the threads because it's less caustic in a closed space uh, than brake clean which makes me cuckoo. Um, so we'll start by removing these and I gotta tell you, I wouldn't recommend what I'm gonna do here to everybody, but um, this is a half inch drive uh, and impact. And the reason I'm using this is on the other side, I had to use it. And the other thing about using impacts, and if you have a tool that you're familiar with and you have the settings correct, you can actually get on this bolt uh, when removing it square and keep it square because with a ratchet you get it on there with an extension that you're going to need it's easy to tilt the extension one way or the other as you pull on it at the same time you see i have the wheel clamped into a workmate it's a it's it's a wooden jaws it can't hurt anything the wheel's in there i can move it but it's not going anywhere i nice, snug it up a little more and uh like i said Using this half inch, this is something that I wouldn't recommend unless you're very familiar with the tool. And uh, oh, check which direction you got it going in before you start anything. You know, taking these out by hand, if they're frozen in there, you, you, torques are they're not that deep, and uh, and they're easy to uh, to strip. And uh, if you do that you're off to the machine shop for the easy out and you don't want to screw that hub up it turns into a whole nightmare so anyway having said that let's put it on here and, let's, and I'm gonna go real easy on the trigger and and uh, let's see come on now there, we go. there just a just I'm just touching it and it's back in these bolts I'm gonna tell you there we go that one's not so bad on the other side I had one that I had to really work on. Now you could take a torch, heat up the bolt, and uh, and that'll break the Loctite loose, but you've got a sealed bearing here to think of, so you're, you could damage that. Anyway, if you can manage it, this is the way to go. Um, and I've already loosened up the other ones. That one, uh, uh, two, I left to the end. What I do next is I take my Create drive butterfly, 
and they're going to come out relatively easy, but they were, there was so much thread locker on these from Ducati that, um, and I've had this bike since 3,500 miles, so there's no way these rotors have been off before. That, um, there's no, I couldn't budget with this. And the more you hammer on these things, uh, trying to get them loose, the more you, uh, more damage you do to the threads. So I've already cleaned all these up previously, but what you do is you take your die, you run the bolt in, uh, and it'll take the buildup of Loctite off of there. Um, that's where I go back to my quarter inch again, and we just uh, spin the bolt like this, right in. And this one's got some crud on it, so as I get towards the bottom, it's getting a bit tighter. And um, if, it, if it's really bad, I'll uh, take a little WD-40, which actually I probably should have done anyway. And I'm trying to make this video as short as possible. And there we go, see? And back it out. Like I said, these other ones are already done. So, the next thing you want to do is clean up the hole in the wheel. So we're going to get the rotor off. That's history. They're for sale if anybody wants them. And uh, we're going to do the same thing with all these holes. So, like I said, I've done all of these except this one. So a little WD, just a touch. We get our, um, there it is. Got a two here that I haven't done. Okay, and we're just going to run that in. And I have sockets. You can, I mean, if you're going to use taps and dies frequently, you can get a set of these sockets. They're made for the taps. They're handy as all to get out. And uh, again, just take my quarter inch. Need that extension. And you run it in, and as we go along, you make it a little bit more snug. Put a little WD on it, and run it in there. There we go. But I can feel the thread locker, the dry thread locker on this. And I just load a little as I go, and right to the bottom. There we go. Now, you can imagine if you took this out and you have a big buildup of thread locker on the on these bolts, and then you just add more to it, you're compounding problems in the future. And, uh, you know, again, when you have a bolt that's in there too tight and you're just working with hand tools, uh, you strip the bolt, or let's say even mess up the hole a bit. Um, it becomes a real nightmare at that point because then you're it's the easy outs and uh, worst case scenario you damage this enough that you have to fill it in and drill it and retap it and like make a new hole. You don't want to get into that. And you may not think it can happen, but it's it's actually common that people make mistakes like that. So doing it this way. There we go. See the thread locker blown out of there. And give another little shot here. There we go. Take the tap out. Okay, so like I say, I've done all these other holes already. You get the idea. And now we get our nice, lovely braking wave rotor out here. Slip it on. Here's the deal, guys. It does not take much of this thread locker 
This is a medium strength. I, you could probably get away with using a mild strength, which is the pink or purple. And I'll get up nice and close and I'll show you how much of this stuff I use. And it, and it sure as hell isn't what they do in Bologna. So, oops. Well, you like to see a little on the bolt anyway. Here we go. This is a, a paste type that Permatex, Permatex does. And it's easier to sort of control. It's less messy and not as wasteful. There, you can see that's squat as they would say. So start the bowl. I'm going to do the same thing on all the other five. I'll just get quickly through this. You get the idea. Again, this is a seemingly uh, simple task. And like I said earlier, I've seen people turn this into a, a real mess. You, you screw up just one bolt out of 12 or one hole and uh, you got a nightmare in your hands. And at the very least, doing it the wrong way makes it tougher. Now once we get these in here, um, and I'm, you know, I've been using air tools for years, it's not rocket science, but, um, and using the same tools, so I know just a little, I mean, very minimal amount of thread locker here. Um, put this, I like this stuff, it's great. Um, and I'm going to use my Butterfly 3 drive here. And what I do is I hold back a bit so that it'll spin the bolt up. It speeds the job up a bit for the purposes of this video. Otherwise, I'd be just trying to ratchet here. See? And you'll hear it bottom out. I'm, I just let off before the bolt hits the, hits the bottom. See? That, that's not even hitting the bottom. There. Now, last but not least, we're going to torque these down. So I have a digital torque wrench here from Gear Wrench. It's actually a real nice one. And uh, the recommended setting on an 8.25 bolts throughout the most of the bike or anywhere on the frame is going to be uh, 24 nanometers. And um, so you're going to hear this as it, as it creeps up on the bolt. Um, yeah, okay, so that one's good, and I want to crisscross here, so I just pull down, and you'll hear it beep just before it hits the mark. There we go. This one's nice, it even has a little, uh, it even has a little, whoops. So we're going to crisscross around here so, an, an X pattern. Oh, that one there has a little tall on it. So there we go. You can't see it from there, but this one has a little orange uh, light that digital, uh, or sorry, LED that comes on. There it goes just prior to hitting the mark, and there it goes. And we go around. That one's going to be close. There we go. There. Can we work our way around? Just check them all. There we go. That was the last one on the list. All right. I'm gonna go back downstairs again. It's good. And then I. After I do the last one, I generally just make one trip around the rim. And uh, check them all. Make sure they feel right. There you go. So that's a nice set of uh, braking rotors installed. Ready to go. Let you have a look here. There we are. And I hope that these little tips will help some of you out, make the job go a little easier for you. Later.